Well, it is No Shave November here at 94.1 The Rock, and we are celebrating with a little beard inspiration by talking to a few different people that have jumped on the No Shave November bandwagon and gone to the next step. And we're started off with Gary Norman today. Gary, you are uh, the founder, I believe, of the Society of Bearded Gentlemen, or beardedgents.com, correct? Yes, yes, I am. Now, uh, how did that come to be exactly? What, what made you decide to start the website? Well, you know, it's, it's probably not so glamorous. There was another website years ago that three of us were friends on, and the webmaster just, I guess, got tired of running the site. And he decided in 2009 that he, and he you know, abruptly announced it in January that it was closing in March. Mm. And so there were about five, 6,000 people on the site, and everybody started scrambling for each other's email addresses. And I'm like, you know, realistically, I'm not going to be able to keep in touch with any of you. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, I mean, realistically, so, you know, uh, there were a few, bunch of ideas on the site being bounced around uh, on that site. Uh, Arn, uh, who's on Whisker Wars, he started a group and uh, started a group on Yahoo, and then I started my website. All right. Now so I know. We've we've managed to keep our group together. Plus, we've grown far beyond, you know, my original plans. <laughs> yeah, how many members do you have on there now? Do you know roughly? Uh, I've got about thirty four hundred members 30? on the site. We average about twelve thousand visits a month. Wow, That's... and uh, we've had almost almost five million hits since uh, August of two thousand nine. That's fantastic. You know, it's it's funny how uh, bearding can become a community by simply just growing your facial hair out. You see somebody with a nice beard and it, it, just the head nod of approval. You know, <laughs> it's, it's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the brotherhood, yeah, <laughs> Bro- definitely the brotherhood. Uh, you know, and, and guys that either wear short beards or no beards, of course, don't necessarily experience that. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, what what I guess how long have you been growing your beard personally? This beard uh, that I've got currently is a little over six years. And uh, for those that haven't seen your pictures before, don't know how, about how long is it? It's about 14 inches, competition measuring. <laughs> Which uh, I've, I've seen the explanation, but how exactly is it that they measure competition-wise? The, the, the way they measure beard length in competition is they measure from the bottom lip. Okay, and then just down. pull all the way down to the, the bottom yeah, of whatever? Yeah, all the way down. It's measured from the bottom lip. Uh, a lot of guys, you know, personally measure from the chin, but that's not accurate. Okay. As far as competition goes. So. Right. Now, competitions. We're talking beard competitions with Gary Norman here of the Society of Bearded Gentlemen. Gary, uh, w- you were took part in the recent uh, the National uh, Beard Mustache Competition, didn't you? Yes, yes. I was in the Nationals in New Orleans on September 7th. Now, uh, what exactly does it take to get into that? I mean, is it just anyone that wants to just pays a fee and you join and you're, and you're entered, or how does it work? Yeah, pretty much. There's uh, the nationals use the um, guidelines and the categories that the international bearding community uses. The uh, they just had the World Comp in Germany, um, and they have a specific set of categories. I think there's 18 total, and that's what we had at the nationals. And you know, there's there's many different styles of mustache categories. You know, they just don't have a mustache competition. You know, right. you're either the cat category or your walrus <laughs> mustache or your Ali. And then beards, of course, there's partial beards, you know, which are goatees and things, and full beard, natural, freestyle. Uh, it, it was a blast. It's an absolute blast. Anybody can join. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, really, uh, I, and my beard was probably the next to shortest in my group. Really? And I need to explain. I was in full beard, natural. And there were so that's usually the largest group in any competition. So there were so many people, they broke us up into three groups. So the category was full beard natural. Mm-hmm. And then they broke us up into three groups of nine, group A, group B, and group C. I was in group B. And I had the next to shortest beard, but I was a finalist. Nice. It's not all so, about, you know, it's, it's, it goes to it's say, it's not all about size, too. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, yeah it was, it's a blast. I mean, you know, to be there... With a hundred, I think there were 158 or 160 competitors, plus their family and friends that came with them, and you know, and just local local people in the New Orleans community. Uh, it was just a great time, you know. I mean, everybody I met was so nice. Absolutely, you know. You know and it's just it's a great thing to know that you're with that many people and everybody's friendly, <laughs> you know, and everybody's looking out for you. You know, you're walking around. The, you know, the uh, French Quarter, and, you know, you see a beardy, and you look over, and they nod to you and wave, and it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're talking, that one's the national competition was held in New Orleans. Is it the same place every year, or do they kind of move it around? 
they move it around. It's been in, uh, I think it was in Chambersburg, PA, one year. It was in Las Vegas, I believe, last year. This year it was in New Orleans, and next year it's going to be in Portland, Oregon. Oh, nice. I want to get out to Oregon anyway. Maybe I'll have to consider it. <laughs> now you're so- Yeah, definitely. I'm hoping. <laughs> All right. how, how many years have you done? Is that your only year you've done the national competition, or have you done it before that? No, that's the only time I've done the national. I did do a competition last year in 2012 in Orlando called the Battle of the Beards. Okay. Which, that actually originates out of Atlanta, Georgia. Right on. Now, uh, and I think last year was the first year they actually ventured out of Atlanta and did Orlando. And but it was, you know, best mustache. Mm-hmm. Best, no. Are you it from? Wasn't. Are you from yeah. Florida? Or where are you from at? Uh, originally, I grew up in Georgia, but I've been in Florida for over thirty years now. Okay. I've lived in Vermont, Massachusetts, and. <laughs> now, now you mentioned this beard has been in this form or growing for six years. Uh, what made you decide to go full on and just let it go? Well, I started it. I started in 2005, and I just decided, you know, I was like, I've worn a short beard for years, and I love them, mm-hmm. but it's like I've never, you know, had the gonads to take it longer than <laughs> than maybe an inch or two. Yep. So in 2005, I decided I'm like, okay, this is it. I'm going to let it go. And I got I got the beard. I let it go for two years. I let it, it got to about ten inches. And then, you know, one of those weird things got a hold of me, and I cut the beard in half. Ah. And I, I left it, and I was like, oh, my God, what have I done? So then I shaved it off. Wow. And I started over. So this beard is the result of that. Nice. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, you know, myself, I, I did the, uh, I had a full beard last year. I did Won't Shave Winter, as I called it. It started as No Shave November. I took it all the way through the winter. Actually, this would be two years ago. And then in the summer, I decided I took the idea to go down to Mutton Chops, well, I liked it for a week or two, but I wasn't a big fan of that. I didn't like seeing my chin, I guess. So I brought mine back. So mine's just a little over a year. And I would say roughly if I were doing competition style measure, I'm four to five inches. So I'm pretty happy with that. But uh, it's it's a commitment, like you said. <laughs> it, it is. It is. You know, it's uh, and that's the thing that's funny, too, especially with corporations that have anti-beard policies. You know, it's like they, they want you to shave it off. And it's like, dude, this is a commitment. Right. Yeah. This is just something I grew overnight. I didn't put this on last night for the interview. You know, <laughs> this is something that's been in the works for years. Exactly. You know. So yeah, I, I don't know. I I I've failed to understand the uh, the fear of beards in certain corporations. I don't I don't get where they they come across maybe as intimidating or or what the deal is. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, you know, I wrote an article a few years ago called "The Feminization of the American Male," and I cited just just from my personal research, I cited three three separate instances over the past hundred years that have led to our society being primarily a shaving society. You know, and the first is World War One, because okay. up until then, beards were allowed in the military. Okay. But World War One is when chemical warfare started happening, and the beard, uh, the gas masks wouldn't fit properly on a bearded face. All right. Yeah, makes sense. So that's when the military made shaving part of its rules. No beards were allowed. Of course, that's been reversed now to a degree because a lot of our military men in the Middle East are allowed to grow beards. Okay. And the reason for that is because the locals in middle in the Middle Eastern countries don't trust men who shave. <laughs> Rightfully so. <laughs> so, you know, so when our troops are trying to talk to locals and trying to find out information about, you know, different groups over there, they won't talk to you. Okay. So they so our military has allowed some of our troops to grow their beards out so that the so that the locals will trust us. That makes sense. I can see that. The other, uh, the other cause I think that has led to the shaving society that we have now is the '60s in general. I'm just going to lump all the '60s together, you know, <laughs> into one decade because that was the, you know, the love decade. Everybody stopped shaving. Everybody stopped bathing. Yep. And you know, and a lot of them turned to drugs, and a lot of them turned to crime, and I, and I think that just left a bad taste in people's mouths. And these guys were all bearded. I can see that. You know, it kind of gives it that dirty. Uh, smelly kind of assumption, like you mentioned, they didn't do. They were doing drugs. They weren't bathing. They weren't showering. So you see, you see beards, and some people just automatically assume that they're dirty. Yes, exactly, exactly. You know, and then the third, the third thing in, in the past hundred years that I think has led to us being a shaving society in America, anyway, is the women's movement of the seventies. You know, and I'm not definitely not saying anything bad about that because I think it's I think it's awesome that that happened. But in the process of that happening. Men were also expected to start getting in touch with their female sides a little more and being a little more, 
Yeah, open yep. tooth thing, and and the shaving just you know it just kind of pushed the shaving. It just kept going. All right. And now you know, and nowadays, of course, because beards are a trend with hipsters. Yep. Uh, you know, that, there's actual evidence that it's hurting the shaving companies. It's hurting the companies that make the razors. Okay. The sales have definitely dropped, and they're you know, and they're scrambling to try to make their money. Which makes sense. You know, but less and less people are shaving because you, know, you waste almost three gallons of water per shave. Three gallons per shave? Per shave. Wow. So, you know, if you stop shaving for a week, you know, there's 21 gallons of water you save, and if every person does that, there's a lot of water. <laughs> See? We're saving the environment while we're making our, fi- our faces a little more bearded and fr- friendly looking. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. You know, and they and they say that you that a man, an average male, uh, spends three thousand three hundred and fifty hours shaving in his life. Wow. See, and we're That's saving time. Days. It just makes no sense to waste all that time shaving. Yeah, and the money. You know, the money on the razors, the time. Yep. You know, and the thing is, it's as natural as rain. <laughs> you know, I mean, the beard's going to grow whether you want it to or not. Exactly. Why bother stopping it? Exactly. Why? Why do that to yourself? Your body's made to grow it. Let it grow. Now, uh, on the on the grooming side of things, do you have any tips or tricks or any kind of beard oils or shampoos or anything you suggest or just uh, you personally use or endorse? There are so many products on the on the market, but you know, I do I do want to let your listeners know that you probably will never find a beard product in a department store or in a salon yet. Right. I know there's, I know Aiden, um, I think his name is Aiden uh, Gill in New Orleans. He carries uh, beard products, in, but I think his barbershop is very unique in the country. <laughs> yeah. Um, I personally use Bluebeard's Original. Uh, they make a beard wash, a beard saver, which is like a conditioner, and then they also have a weekly treatment that's very good. Uh, I've used those for years. and But now you know, there's so many products. Beard oils are great. Uh, you use them sparingly. And they're conditioners. You use it after you've washed your beard. You put, uh, depending on the length of your beard, you put anywhere between two and twelve drops in your hand. Okay. You know, rub your hands together and then run it your neck through your beard and make sure because the oils are good for your skin too. Mm-hmm. But the, really, you know, the uh, beard brand makes a good oil. Portland Beard Company. Um, there's one called Beard Rejuvenating Oil Bro. It's known as. <laughs> it's very good. And there's uh, Spiffy Stuff. Uh, those are all good companies that make great beard oils. Uh, and, but but in, all in all, the very best thing you can do for your beard is to take care of yourself. Absolutely. Be healthy, eat healthy, and just take care of yourself. That's really, you know, you can't make a beard grow thicker. You can't make it grow faster. You can't. It's all genetics. Yep. Absolutely. So all you can do, the best thing you can do is just to take care of yourself and be healthy. Absolutely. Keep up on the hygiene on, and stuff. I uh, wouldn't want to give them that bad reputation that the 60s did again. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, no. you know, I mean, I, I have people come up to me on occasion and want to touch my beard, and when they do, they're like, oh, my God, it's so soft. <laughs> exactly. You condition them? Like, well, yeah, you condition your hair. I condition my beard. <laughs> exactly. Now, again, if people want to learn more about the uh, Society of Bearded Gents, it is uh, beardedgents.com, correct? Yes, beardedgents.com, and I'm also at um, beardedgents.me with the Beardo blog. Okay. And Make- we're on Facebook. We have the fan page, which is uh, the, under the Society of Bearded Gentlemen, and that's doing great. We've got almost 16,000 likes and an audience of about 400,000 people. Awesome. And you guys are on, uh, is that what you, are you on Instagram or Twitter or anything like that as well? I'm on Instagram as the one bearded gent. Okay. Gents, actually, the one bearded gents, and I'm on Twitter as at the bearded gents. Perfect. So basically, look for bearded gents or the one bearded gents, and they'll find you. But uh, the Society of Bearded Gentlemen is online at beardedgents.com. Gary Norman here uh, with us, and uh, looking forward to hopefully growing your guys' site some more as we all look forward to growing our beards out some more. Definitely, definitely. All right. Well, thank you for joining us, Gary. I look forward to uh, maybe running into you down the road at some competitions or something fun like that. That would be awesome, Rusty. Thank you much, man. All right. I'll get...